All right, we're gonna start off. Rob's gonna show us how to trim this one before it goes in the ground. And then you get to see a Mexican dig a hole, which is nothing new. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, let Rob go from here. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, my name's Rob McDonald. I've met everybody else. I manage the nursery in Lindale. And today we're going to talk about grafting or pruning. This is uh, called a Flame Prince peach. I brought that especially for Joe. For hey. Flame Prince over there. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, this is um, on pruning. What you want to do is, is basically on a peach tree, you, you prune it more severe than you would uh, just any other type of tree. But on, a, on a peach tree, so I wanted to bring this one today so you can see how you do it when you first start out with a tree before you put it in the ground. So, have you ever seen a peach orchard? Have you ever been a peach orchard? Have you seen how the trees are like a bowl shape and they're kind of like this? Well, how they get that look is first year when you put the tree in, you basically have to cut the tree in half. And then, th th and then it allows the side branches to grow up. So, Joe, I'm going to cut your tree in half. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so what you want to, what I usually do, I'll pick out, you know, and cut it where you got some branching coming up underneath where you're not cutting all the branching out. So this one, I know it seems extreme, but you want to cut it back here. And you see how I'm holding the, the pruners? Instead of cutting it off straight across, I'm doing it at a 45 degree angle and that allows <clears throat> that allows you know like when it rains it's going to allow the water to drip off instead of sitting on top and causing disease now, do we want to put that stuff on there the, the pruning the pruning jelly um, you don't have to on one this size okay. mainly just on those larger trees out there that have been there for two or three years and have the bigger branches okay so, but on the other on the flip side it doesn't hurt to do it either it doesn't hurt to do it okay so but anyway I know that seems extreme, but, but now you, this is only on peaches, okay? That's the only fruit that you do that with. Disclaimer. You don't do that to, you don't do that to a plum, apricot, neck tree, fig, none of that. You can cut some of the top out, but not that extreme. So, what if you already got one planted? Because mine's never been done like that. I got one in the ground already from last year. Yeah, you can still do it. Um, if It's better to go ahead and do it now, and then it'll, it'll put out side branching. Okay. You have some branching on it. Yes. And you could cut like and leave some of the branching like that. Yeah, yeah. And um and then on the tips of the branches, should have sharpened my pruning shears, let's see. You can just kinda trim those back just a little bit. So you can go ninety degrees on those, it don't hurt. Yeah, that's fine. Um and then if you got like two branches growing out to the same side, you don't want to have two uh, growing the same way. Or too crowded I should say. So, and I, really the way peach orchard guys do it, they'll leave three main branches and that's it. That's what they do. So they would probably take these off and just maybe leave those top three or vice versa. They, they might even cut it down here and leave three. And, um, but for a home orchard, you don't have to just leave three branches. You can have four, five, six, it's okay. But for an orchard, it's, uh, anyway, the idea of doing that is it lets as this tree starts to grow, by the end of the summer, this you know they're going to be grown out. The side branches are, but it allows sunlight to get down in there for the ripening fruit. So, where every place you cut, where you prune, is it then going to fork out? Um, it's yeah, it is. It's going to fork right there. Okay, that's right. We'll look it out here when we go out here in a minute. Uh, we got an apricot tree where me and my dad cut it back last year. And, every, and we did it at about eight or nine feet. And everywhere we did it, there's 12 branches coming out of that area. Yeah. So. So, and uh, I don't know, most, most of you probably know this. This doesn't have anything to do with pruning. But planting, um, everybody sees this right here where the graft is. That's where the tree was grafted. You're always going to have a little knob or some people call it the crown. Some people call it the graft. But that's... Um, that's that area right there. So when you plant a fruit tree, you don't want to cover the graft when you plant it because it'll suffocate the tree. So you want to bring your dirt kind of right up to the bottom of the graft. Just leave the graft sticking out of the ground just a little bit. Or some of what we've done since Rob mentioned that to us a while back was we go in with mulch or with chips and then we bowl it out. We go in, we go down the trunk and we pull it back out for that reason. Yeah, that's true. And then, and then uh, yeah, kind of pull the mulch away from the trunk just a little bit um, keeps insects away too so. 
Anyway. That covers that? You want to move on to the... Yep, we'll move out here in a minute. Bigger and better tree. That's not on film, right? <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> no, it wasn't. We're going to demonstrate on how to plant a peach tree. And you want to dig the hole out a, di a little a deeper than what the tree needs to be planted. And then put a little water in the bottom of the hole. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Let me show them this. See, it's definitely deeper and definitely wider. Right. And so, get a little water in the bottom of the hole. And then the reason we took out some extra soil is just basically to loosen up the soil. So when the tree starts growing, it'll have a little looser soil to work its way through. Soil underneath the root ball. Yeah, that's right. Underneath the root ball. Got a little clay mixture in here. This is good soil. Sandy loam and clay mixtures. Pretty nice. And a lot of trees you buy at nurseries are going to be rooted in. These have only been potted for probably a month. So if the dirt falls apart around the roots, just put it down in the soil with it. But we'll see. We'll see how it's going to fall apart. So, just dump all that soil down in there with it. It takes about three months for these to totally root. And so what we did, we get our bare root stock and we put them in containers. So here's the graft on the tree right here where that little notch is. So you want to leave it sticking out of the ground. So there's the ground level about like that. So that's perfect. Up yet with soil. Uh, now we can go. go ahead and put water in it. See all the bubbling? That's getting all the loose air pockets out of the soil. See how it's bubbling? It's really bubbling. Mm -hmm. Lots of loose air pockets. What about moles and gophers eating roots? They can. Uh, if you have them bad enough, some people are digging their holes out three foot deep and about that wide, and they're putting a wire mesh around the perimeter. Um, but I just get the little gopher pellets, and every time I see a mound come up, you dig in the mound, and there's always going to be two runs going into a mound. Put a couple of pellets in each one, and it'll take care of them. That's the easiest thing to do. It's a lot of work to put a wire mesh around each tree. So. Yeah, especially when I'm going out every two weeks and picking up six, seven trees. Yeah, that's too much work. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that Mexican. <laughs> okay, now do we let it sit and then fill back in here in a little bit? You can go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and put it in. You can let it settle or go ahead and put it in either way. It doesn't necessarily matter. I wouldn't use it on fruit trees. Really? No. Now let's check our, our graph. It's underwater, but it's still here. So that's how to plant a peach tree, or a fruit tree, or any tree, really. And it looks really short right now, and pretty, almost like a Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> but by the end of the summer, he's going to have all this new growth, and it's going to be, it'll be up to here. So it'll be nice. And the wood chips. Why are you putting those wood chips around there, Joe? Keep the moisture in. All right. Expose that that graph. That's basically what it's going to look like. It's going to be the wood chips will probably be twice that height and three times that width. Also, because when we get in there and mow, we can get around it and not get close to the tree. So that's it. Let's see where we're at right now. That one's right about knee height. So at the end of summer, we'll get another shot. Yeah, yeah, we'll be as tall as Rob. <laughs> uh, 
Look at there. A Mexican got him a white man. <laughs> Rob came out and wanted to go to work. Rob's liking the playing out here. Yeah.